I'm Chris Sanchez and welcome to Sonoma Views, where we talk real estate, property management, restaurant reviews, what's going on in Sonoma County, and everything in between. Today's topic is on property management. I want to talk to you about what you do or how to handle, whoa, <laughs> I just went over speed bumps here, part of driving a truck all day. Um, what you do when a tenant wants to break their lease. How do you handle it? when a tenant is under a lease and they want to move out. All right. I will tell you how I handle the situation and uh, maybe other people watching this have had other experiences, good or bad. And please uh, chime in and comment below. I'd love to learn from other people. We're here to collaborate. Uh, my current lease agreement, and this is over five years of experience and dealing with many many tenants and not very many people who in the big scope of things who have actually moved out and broken their lease but here's how I handle it the the right answer the legal answer is if a tenant is under a 12-month lease a one-year lease as an example and they they decide that they just move out break their lease month number six right in the middle of it well legally they're under a contract just like if you're under a mortgage or a car loan, like an installment loan, you agree to, or the tenant agrees to the full contract amount. Make it simple. If it's a two month, I'm sorry, $2,000 rental, they have agreed to pay $2,000 rent per month for, for a one year lease for a total rent amount of $24,000. That is their contract amount fully enforceable so what you can do is okay we don't care if you move out you're still responsible for the remaining amount up until that lease term and uh, if you do that uh, as long as your paperwork is in order go to court you will win that is basic contract law they voluntarily agreed they committed to that amount just like any other contract they committed to that amount okay so that's the legal uh, the legal answer if that were to happen you landlord could potentially be sitting on a uh, on a vacant property for six months is it realistic in my opinion no why would you want to have a, a house just sitting vacant uh, for six months and you know charging the tenants for that amount of money yes I understand the income part of it but it's not a good idea to have a property sitting vacant for six months. Uh, the biggest thing that comes to mind off the top of my head is the fact that vacant property is more likely to become vandalized, damaged, or you could get, um, depending where you live, but it could happen anywhere, uh, squatters. You could get homeless, go in, it could become vandalized, somebody could go in there and you know, set up shop. This did happen with foreclosures during the crazy time, 2008, 2009. Oh, look, vacant property. They were all over the place. Vacant foreclosures. Nobody's running the show here. Bank-owned properties. Hey, anybody could just go in there and, you know, set up shop and you know, make it their own. Then now you have to deal with um, a mess, squatters. So from that perspective, it's not a good idea to have a vacant property sitting for so long. I'd rather have somebody else uh, living in it, enjoying the place, taking care of the place, um, landscaping it's going to get overgrown got to clean the gutters just somebody has to maintain it and that is a tenant responsibility according to the lease more than likely so the tenant should be doing that all right so the practical way which has worked really well for me it's including a uh, breach of contract uh, term there's a clause inside my lease agreement and it states breach of contract slash early termination and it spells out the process, what happens in the event that um, they want to terminate early. They want to move out before their contract date. So, uh, and by the way, a side note, that clause in there, in the past year, in the past two years, they have saved my clients thousands and thousands of dollars in rental income that they were, uh, they were able to receive uh, through insurance relocation companies because um, we we had some 
tenants, two in particular, who had high rent amounts, and one of them was up to 10,500 rent per month. And even though the tenants moved out early, uh, my client, the landlord, was able to secure and get paid um, over $10,000 rent, even though the tenant had moved out. So, um, yeah, and that times, I think it was three months, maybe four months, so a significant amount of money because I had this term in the rental agreement. So it states, breach of contract, early termination. If the tenant moves out before the contract date, the tenant is responsible for all the costs associated with re-renting that property. So that includes a leasing commission. Uh, they have to pay for you know the cost to marketing, getting that place ready, uh, showing it. If we have to do cleaning, repairs, um, but mainly it's leasing, we have to turn around and find a new tenant. We have to start over. We have to be able to show the property. And then, you know, if the landlord does it themselves, himself, herself, then you don't have a leasing commission, but you still have other, other expenses. You might do advertising that the property is available for rent. Um, you might have to do some cleaning. You might have to do some minor repairs, get that thing turned over so that it is rent ready again. And depending on the condition that the tenants left it, if they didn't clean, steam clean the carpet, you have to go and steam clean the carpet. Uh, if they trash the carpet, now you have to go and replace that carpet in order to make it rent ready. So uh, the simple answer in the way that I explain it to the tenants when they ask, what happens if I want to move out? Well, listen, we'll work with you. And depending when, uh, what, where they are in that lease term, where are they, where are they along that line? If, if they move in in January and they're asking you this in February or March, come on, man. I mean, just, just moved in. Now, life happens. I totally understand that. Life happens. And sometimes, you know, unexpected. So they commit to a lease, but something major happened and they, they have to leave. They have to go. I get that. But, you know, it's if it's month number 10 or 11 and it's coming up on 12, just figure it out. Pick your battles. Find a solution that works for both uh, parties. If it's month number 11 and they have to bail early, then, hey, you know what? You, your lease was going to end anyway. Just pay me the rent. The, the house will stay vacant for the month. And that's it. Let me show it and I'll get somebody else in there. Or um, if I'm able to get somebody else in there sooner, then, you know, don't worry about that last month. We'll just charge you rent up until I have the new person that moved in. So where they lie within that, that lease period plays a part. But the simple answer is the tenant is responsible for the cost of re-renting it because there are leasing commissions that our clients have to pay us um, again. And we're not supposed to be re renting it right now. Yeah. The prematurely or before it's we were supposed to. If we did a one year lease, we should not be having a vacancy for at least a year. Um, so we have to reimburse the client, the landlord for the leasing commission. And the tenant is responsible for the full payment of rent up until I have a new paying tenant moved in. All right. So uh, this just happened. Uh, we just had this question uh, this morning, as a matter of fact. So uh, tenant wants wants to move out. They want to break the lease, but they want to give us a 30 day notice after we secure a new tenant. Well, no, it doesn't work that way. It's um, it's not a <laughs> it's not a catch 22 negotiable type thing. Uh, they're still responsible and they have to make the payments uh, as it stands whether or not we found another tenant but we will work in good faith we will diligently try to get that place re-rented the sooner the better and then it just works out for all parties so a, a good example would be um, let's use March we're currently in March 2019 today's the first day of spring let's assume a tenant says uh, hey I'm buying a house and I want to terminate the lease early I want to move out early can you work with me or um, divorce separations happen people get sick maybe they have to leave somewhere else in the country for work uh, military they have to leave and now you can't necessarily 
can't penalize somebody if they're going on military leave. But um, other under other circumstances, I'll, I'll work with them and figure out. So an example would be, all right, move out by the end of March. Give me the keys. Pay the April rent prepaid as normal. Your that's their obligation. So now I get keys on March 31st or April 1st. I get the keys to the property. It's vacant. Now, uh, now I turn on the utilities in my company name to make sure that the lights stay on. The tenant is still responsible for the utility payments while it's vacant because they're still under a lease. But I will bill that that amount back to them. That's part of getting the place re-rented. Um, I will begin marketing and showing the property, or my leasing agents will, uh, the ladies in my office who handle the leasing. They'll show the properties and try to get somebody in there sooner the better. If I get somebody to move in within 15 days, say April 15th, that's awesome. Then at that point, what I will do is uh, I'll charge 15 days of rent from the person who's coming in because they moved in on the April 15th. They pay prepaid through the April 30th. So I prorate based on the tenant who moves in. Now I will just um, charge the rent to the outgoing tenant up until the day that the new tenant moved in. I know it gets a little confusing, but we go all the way till the moment that one goes in, then I'm able to stop the accounting for the previous tenant. Now, um, you know, that's 15 days and that's um, that's moving very quickly, but you know, realistically a month. So I get the keys on April 1st, it's vacant, I show the place, uh, get it ready for the new tenant so they could come in April 1st. So at that point, the new tenant has pays the new month of rent as they should, and then the exiting the vacating tenant paid for the full month of april rent but then i'm able to end their contract there and then when i close out the security deposit uh closing statement and do the breakdown it's like okay here was your security deposit take away the leasing commission as a deduction whatever that might be 500 bucks uh, depending on the the um, the amount of the rental it could be more than that but say 500 bucks and they paid all of April rent, so that's done. I have to charge them for utilities. Maybe we had to do some cleaning, maybe do some minor repairs. So settle out the accounting, mail it out to the previous outgoing tenant, and we're done. And at that point, I just start with the brand new tenant, new lease agreement, new security deposit, close out the books completely. So um, hopefully that made sense. The I do allow people to break their lease, or it's in their contract if that happens and we work with them they're responsible for the payment of rent up until the time i have a new person move in plus the cost of re-renting leasing that uh, that unit and any other costs associated with marketing and the uh, marketing expenses and re-renting it so hopefully that helps thank you very much for watching i'm chris sanchez this is sonoma views i will talk to you soon